Welcome to our program today, folks. My name is Richard Marshall. I'm president of Siskiyou Water Users Association, and this segment today is a continuing part of our series on educating uh, you all about the uh, effects of dam removal, the climate dam removal process. And today I have with me Francis Gill from Copco Lake. He's the fire chief there, and I'm going to ask uh, Francis uh, to tell us a little bit about himself. Thank you. I've uh, been a resident of Copco Lake going on 21 years, um, and I have been the fire chief out there for 15 or 16 years. I can't keep track of it. Um, but I also uh, own property out there. We've just purchased the Copco Lake store, um, and we have plans to reopen that for the community. Mm -hmm. um, I have a child that was born out in that area, and so we've, we're deeply rooted in the area. Right, and can you tell me a little bit, we, we believe that Copco Lake will be the most impacted area probably in Siskiyou County by the removal of these dams because right now you enjoy a lakefront setting throughout there, but what do the people, and yourself included, in Copco Lake feel is the impact to you of the dam removal? Well, there's a lot of impacts to the dam removal. I mean, number one, you said we live on the uh, on the shoreline, and that is a bit of a, a unique situation for these four lakes. We we do have a long-standing community on the shoreline. It was developed back in the 1960s. Um, there's some families that have been there even longer than that that still live there. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of history in the area that will be definitely affected by dam removal. And why do you think, Francis, that it's important? What the, should the people know about why it's important to keep these dams in place? What services do they provide? What's the benefit of having the dams? Well, services they provide are recreation and the setting that we chose to live in. They provide a, um, a wonderful ecosystem for a huge variety of animals and plants that live in the area. Some of them are more successful there than they are anywhere else in the county. Um, it provides fire suppression for us, water for fires for, uh, you know, uh, airplanes and helicopters to dip in. Mm -hmm. It provides a, a series of lakes that stay full during these tremendous droughts where every other lake is drying out. Right. Um, and it's just, it serves as a, as a home for all of us that live out there. Yeah, and you're being the fire chief, you have a special uh, relationship with that area in terms of the fires that have, have happened there. And we know that uh, there have been several actually over the last uh, decade or so that have been pretty severe. If those lakes weren't there, what probably might have taken place as a result of not having the lakes to get that water out of? Well, based off of the uh, Klamath Hon fire and the McKinney fire that have been some fairly recent devastating fires in the county. The river uh, acted as no fire break whatsoever mm -hmm. between one side and the other. The wind carried the fire directly across into the town of Hornbrook with devastating effects. Mm -hmm. And the McKinney fire jumped every river, creek, and stream downriver to go every direction it wanted to. When we had a, our last fire at Copco Lake, even though they backburned, to, from the lake up to the edge of the fire. Without that break of the lake, it would have continued all the way, all the way down to the channel of the river, jumped the river and up the other side. And some places, especially on the south side of the lake, are so overgrown that mm -hmm. it would have just continued running all the way up Willow Creek Mountain. Now, Francis, the people who want to remove these dams are determined to remove the dams. And it's been said by people like Glenn Spain, example, who's the uh, representative for Pacific Coast Fishermen, that uh, it's not about the salmon, and that's what we believe too. But tell me, what do you think, being up there at Copco Lake, what is your opinion about the idea that salmon are somehow going to come upstream to an area they haven't been to before and, uh, and propagate? <coughs> well, I know... Um I know b vaguely how salmon work. They, they are born in rivers. They spend most of their life maturing in the ocean and then they return to the place that they were born mm -hmm. to spawn. Um, the hatchery has been that for them for so long and that's where I believe most of those fish are gonna return to anyway. But I can tell you at Copco because I like, I love fishing at Copco right. and I fished with my iron, I mean my uh, 
fish finder a lot that there are places that look that are mountain or hills underwater and you can tell that the river goes down over them and cascades off 30 or 40 feet and that's in the middle of the lake there's been studies showing right. dikes further down towards the dam in Wards Canyon that exist in the same capacity where there's large drop-offs and yeah. so it just doesn't seem like salmon or you know can only get up 10 15 feet of, of fast running waterfall if they're going to get over a low running waterfall that's 30 40 feet tall it just doesn't seem possible to me yeah you're familiar of course with our group we did a very uh thorough search located uh where the two at least two dikes were located and there are plunge pools at the ends of those dikes which indicates the water underwater is flowing like a waterfall mm -hmm. cascading down those in there. Uh, you're familiar with the history of Copco Lake. Could, could you tell us just briefly about Copco Lake in terms of uh, why it was selected for the dam site, the first dam site, and, and uh, what is special about Copco Lake? Well, I think Copco Lake was selected for the first dam site because of the naturally existing very narrow canyon at the end of it and the natural topography and fall of the canyon in that area. Mm -hmm. um, and from what I understand, the power company originally had intended to build dams all the way up from mm -hmm. Copco at one time and do some very similar things. Um, the dam provides electricity. I know they say it's not very much, but compared to, you know, the alternative ways to generate electricity, I think it's a pretty great way to do it. Um, now, uh, what, uh, excuse me for interrupting, but I wanted to get to this question here. Uh, a lot of people assume that because this community is going to be so dramatically affected, their lives will be totally changed, their houses, everything they the reason they went up there is going to be destroyed by this dam removal process. Uh, when have you had the last public hearing by KRC up in your area? I mean, have you been met every day? Are they coming up to tell you how they can solve the problems that you think you're going to have? Well, what's happening there? Um, so I was even consulting a few other residents that have been on top of this as we go, and it seems like the last time anybody from KRRC came out was several years ago, and it was a gentleman that I understand doesn't work for KRRC anymore, but his reasoning for coming out was to ask the residents what they would like seen done mm -hmm. post dam destruction as far as would you like a park or would you like walkways or would you like this or that, and then that was the last any public anything that we've had with KRRC. As the fire department, they claimed that they had made several attempts to reach out to me for an interview. Um, however, my contact information is very easy to reach through the county, uh, Siskiyou County Fire Chiefs Association and various other ways. And so I definitely don't feel like a, right. uh, an attempt was made in earnest to contact the fire department about any of their fire suppression issues. Right. That they so if you were contacted by people on the outside, and I want the audience to really uh, understand this situation, here's a community that's going to be dramatically affected by this dam removal process, yet they have no public hearings in this area regarding this project. They haven't been met with individually in any recent time to explain how these problems that they see coming down the road are going to be taken care of. Would that be a fair assessment? Yes, it would definitely be a fair assessment. Right. We feel very ignored out there um, mm -hmm. in all aspects of it. Right. Especially our right to speak about how we feel about what they're doing. Right. Okay, well, that concludes uh, talking to Francis today. Thank Thanks you very sure. much, and we appreciate the information. And those of you who are concerned about this issue, you can contact the Siskiyou Water Users Association through our website, which is siskiyouwateruserassociation.org. Thank you very much.